welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another luminary interview where we bring inspired and inspiring examples, teachers, guides, coaches, mentors even, to help us learn how to navigate effectively the road to entrepreneur excellence. Today, I've got the privilege and pleasure to introduce you to Joyce Lehman. Uh, she's going to show us how to boost our brands and strategically grow our network networks to win more business. And uh, she's really an expert in networking, but be careful here. Uh, networking may not be what you think. And I'm going to let her explain uh, <laughs> that. But she's uh, an author of two books, a business coach, a national speaker. Uh, hard to believe, uh, but she uh, claims that she was a is a former wallflower in the world of business networking, so she can take even the worst of us from being that uh, uh, person that wants to kind of blend in with the wallpaper to somebody that's really out there. So Joyce, uh, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, well, it's my pleasure to be here, Steve. I appreciate the invite. Yes, well, uh, look. Um, uh, where I want to start right away is, uh, yeah, I, I know you, and we didn't talk about this uh, in, in our brief chat before the show here, but you and I share uh, a passion and even I would go so far as a zealous insistence about mindset as a critical component to uh, you know, accomplishing it, success in general, achievement in general, but also uh, specific business goals. And, and so I want, to, uh, I want to ask you to uh, help those of us that, are, that may be, uh, feel uh, hopelessly inept in this idea of making connections in the marketplace, wishing that things like SEO and uh, Google searching and that kind of <laughs> thing will, will, right. will, be, will be the magic uh, formula, right? Uh, help us make the mindset shift to... Yes, even you can do this. Well, someone in 2008 who literally didn't have a brand, a clue, or a network when I first launched my business, I have learned how to do this from ground up, and I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So the comment about a former wallflower in the world of business networking, I was actually in outside sales for 11 years and contract wow. furniture sales in another career. And I was the top salesperson in my company. It was a smaller company, but still. And I hated networking events. Uh -huh. I wasn't comfortable at all. I didn't understand. It was like you go and you get that, you get that, you got to give business cards out and you're yeah. there to get business. And it's yeah. just that to me, it just didn't sit well. High anxiety environment, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I found out actually that I'm an ambivert. So if your listeners don't know this, there is introvert, which we're familiar with, right? We get our energy more from being alone and then extrovert, and that's how people see me. Ambiverts mean that I can put on a great face. I love to be out. I love to make connections, but I recharge by myself. Ah, but very gotta good. Get okay, I like that term. Yeah, very good. And I didn't, I didn't make it up, but I will tell you um, – in my book that Dan Pink, I mention him, New York Times bestselling author, yeah. he has an introvert, ambivert, extrovert assessment. And that one piece alone helped me tremendously because then I went, it's not that I'm bad at networking, it's just I'm an ambivert. I tend to have those yeah. tendencies, so no wonder I'll go to an event and then, by God, let me get home and just chill. <laughs> so that's the thing that, that tends to have a great awareness for some people, so it makes it a little bit easier. I love it. So um, you, you, what, what I'm hearing you say, Joyce, is that you found your, your own self, your own style in terms of how you navigated uh, the world. Uh, I, I did not realize, I had not discovered that you were in uh, uh, sales for 11 years before you launched in uh, back in what, 2008, it sounds like, um, yes. which, is, which is interesting. That should give us hope uh, by itself. <laughs> Right. Um, right. Let's go be in outside sales and, you know, not do any of that networking stuff because yeah. it always works well. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's try that. Okay. So again, back to mindset. So uh, first foothold I'm hearing is you just sort of found your own way to uh, being okay with who you were, how you uh, interacted, right? 
Uh, that is one. There's actually a couple of significant pieces. So yeah, when, good, we, good. Go. <laughs> when you look at the foundation of mindset where I started was back in 2005. I was introduced to a program from the Pacific Institute based in Seattle. And the program focuses on cognitive psychology and social learning theory. So simply okay. put, performance mindset, helping you understand conscious versus subconscious habits, attitudes, beliefs, expectations. I went through that program and it literally shifted the course of my life, my career. Nice. I went to work for the group that I'd gone through the training with. And that's where I started with my business in 2008, clearly thinking that I was going to be training on performance mindset. Uh -huh. So not having a brand, a clue, or a network in 2008, social media was just coming out. I needed to get out and network differently. Yeah. Another key influencer in my life is Bob Berg, who wrote yeah. Go-Giver and Endless Referral. Yeah, yeah, my favorite, yeah. I developed a relationship with him thanks to Twitter. I've had the honor of sharing the stage with him. And so oh. Bob, you know this because you've read The Go-Giver. It's that, that mindset of if I think about adding value first, and it takes the pressure off of me. So that yeah. was another significant piece in addition to the performance mindset, truly cognitive psychology pieces. And then the introvert, ambivert, extrovert assessment, that came along later, but it once again, it was another key piece yeah. to helping me realize what my networking style was and how to do it a little bit more comfortably. Great, great uh, uh, and, and poignant, I would say, journey you're saying uh, embracing uh, basically your own personal style. You're talking about uh, tapping an outside resource to guide you through mindset uh, recalibration, reinvention. And then, uh, I love it. I mean, this theme comes up constantly with those that, I've, uh, that I introduced to the audience here. Um, the idea of really turning the corner on truly and authentically focusing on what you're giving, what you're contributing, uh, the putting your focus on the people that you're targeting and serving, and you've packaged that inside of a networking approach, which is, which is perfect. Now, I teased a little bit that uh, your version of networking, your insights about what networking is or is how it's defined is not what you think. So go ahead and tell us a little bit more <laughs> About uh, about that, I think that's well, great. If you want to go anywhere in business, it happens through relationships. So the front of cover of my book, I crossed out the word networking because yeah. to me, it's not about. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not about going to an event because most people, when they hear the word networking, they think an event. Yeah. To me, your best connections can happen any place at any time. And it may not have anything to do with business. So I want people sh to shift to a connecting philosophy. That's yeah. first off. You know, if I look at in business, in fact, I met with a potential law firm client today. You know, I told them, I've met my four best friends, four best female friends at business events. Okay. So when you go with the intent of you think you're going to meet somebody in business, they're fantastic when it comes to business associates, but we've developed a more significant relationship that way. You know, I mentioned Bob Berg. So Bob and I met on Twitter in 2009. Hmm. I was presenting on networking and I reached out because we were both following each other with a private message and said, hey, Bob, would love to get some additional insight as far as what something that might not be in the book. And Bob responded back in 15 minutes. It blew me away and said, absolutely, here's my email send me an email with what you want to know. So I emailed him and then he said, Hey, give me a call. Wow. Great. Wow. <laughs> I mean, to me, he's like the Patrick Mahomes of networking. <laughs> of course I'm in Kansas city, right? Got to love Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> of course. That's okay. Throw it out there. <laughs> That's good. But it was one of those things I called him and he said, Hey, I'm going to be in Kansas city next week. Would you like to come to a private client event? Of course I want to. Oh, come okay, to cool. So that's how I met Bob in 2009, and then I had the honor of sharing the stage with him about a year after that. So that opened my eyes to think about, well, if this worked for Bob, you know, via Twitter, how else could I make connections using social media? So if somebody is maybe a little bit more introverted, then social media is a great way to start a conversation online. Yeah. Right. If you look at it from a social selling perspective, right, actual business development, 
using social platforms is huge. And then also think proximity. So some of your folks listening to this, they may not be in a city that's of any size or they may want to reach clients in different parts of the country. So that's where just starting a conversation with the intent to add value using social media is a fantastic way to do that. I love that. Yeah. And, and uh, it was, so a couple of things uh, I, I, I feel compelled to amplify. One is um, you were interested in what Bob knew, uh, how he could continue what you know. I mean, he, he's, he's, it's not hard to know that Bob Berg's about, you know, contributing and helping other people and helping other right. people be better. And you said, hey, basically tell me more. Uh, who doesn't want to, um, uh, I tell people all the time, if you can almost, in, in most places in the world, there's a few that we could name that, that aren't like this, but if you stop somebody and say, excuse me, can you do me a favor? Most people would say, yeah, what is it? You know, at least be curious about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you demonstrated a, a, a enough boldness there to make the connection keyword, but then Bob's example about responsiveness, uh, is, <laughs> isn't that, isn't that a fascinating study right there? I with adore the microcosm. The yeah. Yeah. With as many people as want to be in his center of influence and yeah. he just, he lives and breathes what he talks about daily. Yeah. I don't, you know, it, when a person says, I don't have time for it, in the same amount of time it took him to say that, they could have done yeah. it, right? Yeah. And uh, so that, that's brilliant. Okay, so, uh, so networking, social media, if you're, if, if you're an introvert, uh, there's a lot of options there. Uh, physical events and so forth, uh, a form of networking. Uh, there's, there's others, which you may want to help us uh, see here, Joyce, but tell us what the common denominators are with regards to the process of specifically connecting. Uh, some people are, are, are just born with it, it seems, and some of us kind of are, feel very clumsy with that idea. So going into that for a minute, when you think about, a lot of people aren't strategic when they go out to network. They think, I'm just going to go to an event, sure. right? So let's get event focused for a minute. So they think, I'm just going to go to an event, and I hope that I'm going to run into somebody. Mm -hmm. If you get strategic about it, and you see or make a list of three people that you want to meet, or maybe three industries that you want to get connections to, going back to the mindset piece for a minute, this is when your reticular activating system, you know, it's that filter in the central cortex. You're going to see we who you're looking for. Yeah. You get really clear and specific about it. Otherwise, you're walking into a room of people and you're not going to necessarily yeah, see or hear the conversations. Yeah. From a business development perspective, I teach the same thing because if you don't know who it is exactly that you want to talk to, you know, is there a top 20 company list or individual list? So like when you're out on LinkedIn, for example, and you're scrolling through profiles, it makes it easier to spot to search spot, you know, and, and cultivate those connections. So that's the first thing is get very strategic about who it is you want to meet or even the information or resources you need. So sometimes it's not a person. You may be looking for help with something in particular. Okay. Right? So right. go armed with three things. So have an intention. If you're new to, going back to an event, if you're new to a particular event, reach out to the organizer ahead of time. Connect with them on LinkedIn. By the way, use a customized note. Never yeah. send a LinkedIn request without customizing it. Yeah, yeah. And do your research, too, on that person. So skim all the way through their LinkedIn profile. Do an online search really quick of their name. Go to their website and have a reason why you want to reach out to them. I just love it. Yeah. And then, yeah, for introverted folks, too, if you show up to an event and you've already visited with the conference organizer online and you can say, hey, who are the people in this room that you think I need to meet? Because then if they start the introductions, then it's going to make it easier. That's, the same, that's brilliant. Yeah. And the same thing can happen online, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing can happen online. You see somebody on LinkedIn or you have a friend and you reach out and you say, hey, would you be willing to connect me to... And if somebody with influence makes a decision or makes a decision, makes an introduction on your behalf, then if you're looking at it from a true sales process, it can shorten your sales cycle significantly by having those introductions. 
So, wow. and maybe you're the one making the introductions, which is another point. The more that you introduce other people, right. the faster it's going to grow your influence. That's, that's, I get that completely. Right. So we're going in, uh, who do we want to get to know or meet or connect with? Uh, who do we want to connect with that might be a resource for something that we need? Right. Uh, we've done a little bit of homework to uh, connect with the person that probably knows everybody. So we go into the room rather than this very uncomfortable, I don't know anybody, what do I do? Now you go in, at least you know one person uh, that you kind of know because you've, you've introduced yourself. They know everybody, so there's introductions. I mean, I can see this is a massively fast, easy on-ramp, right? Let me test something uh, with you that uh, as, a, as an approach that I've used, I stumbled onto this myself with regards to events. And I can, I'm, you're, you're making a light bulb go off here with regards to uh, uh, online stuff as well. But uh, I've learned to look for the most networked networker in an environment. In other words, try to identify that person that, that everybody seems to know. Sometimes it takes a little bit of observation, but you can tell pretty quickly who, who that person is that everybody seems to know and then just meet that person and suggest a, a, a meeting later to find out uh, who they know and what they know about how to connect with people. Is it, do you feel like that that's a good strategy as well? It is. I was about to say, you when you look at influencers or connectors, sometimes they're disguised, so you don't always know who you has. Know, you don't always, always see them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's who, you know, you look at a title or you look at an industry or you look at somebody and you might discount them by age or whatever that is, and yeah. you have no clue who they know. Because yeah. I play a six degrees of Kevin Bacon exercise when I am speaking at conferences and doing trainings to get people to actually understand, you know, it's not six degrees, it's usually two to three degrees at uh -huh. most. Yeah. to get to that specific person that you want to meet when you make the ask. Nice. So, okay. Yeah. Good clarification. All right. So um, when we talk about um, uh, connection, so we've got some targets. You've got it is here on, on how to go in, whether it's virtually or, or physically uh, with some targets. Uh, what can you give us any tips on, truly connecting what I mean we've, we've got the idea of giving but uh, you know that that first like uh, cold open if you will uh, can sometimes be clumsy so what 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 do you suggest for us then well that goes back to you've got to do your research like right now I'm reaching out to folks in the banking community because banks desperately need my help banks attorneys when it comes to social selling and the work sure. that I do so I am using LinkedIn to reach out to bank presidents, CEOs, VPs within commercial um, business accounts and all of that. And so it goes back to the specific messaging. What's something that is going to possibly say, hey, I'd want to connect with you if you reached out to me. Something else I want to throw in here, and this is extremely important, and I find that a lot of people haven't thought long about this, or have, nor have they put the time into it, but it's the very first place I start with all my clients. We always think that when we're networking and reaching out, that we're the ones that are doing this first. You have to consider what happens when somebody does a Google search on your name. Ah. And if your brand is not positioned well, so if you Google your name and LinkedIn is the first thing that comes up and your profile is not what LinkedIn calls all-star, and actually my clients go to a higher level than all-star, and what's meant by that is if you don't meet certain criteria, your profile doesn't, you're not going to show up in a keyword search on the platform at all. Mm. But if somebody's, say, Steve, say you and I meet at an event and I say, hey, you need to go talk to my friend Brenda Newton and you go out and do a Google search on her before I make an email introduction for you, depending on what you find, you might decide that you want to do business with her or meet her or not. Yes. So that's yes. why your website, your LinkedIn presence, and when I say a robust profile, it is, think of LinkedIn like your own mini website. It should tell an amazing story that when I come onto your profile, I can self-identify with exactly how you can help me. It's keyword rich. 
custom background image, your contact information filled out to make it super easy for somebody to say, that's why I want to connect with that person. Nice. So nine times out of 10, in fact, 10 times out of 10 with my clients, they're not positioned well. We've I done think. everything from brand new websites to LinkedIn to a social media presence. So kind of think about the social media platforms that you're on. And if you're in business, you should be on LinkedIn and have a stellar LinkedIn profile. Great. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's <laughs> on my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a fantastic writer. Actually, I have a team of writers because I, I've written two books. I don't write my own LinkedIn profile. There oh, is an interesting to this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very well. That's, that's, <laughs> You're like, dang it. Now I got to go do that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, you know, we're only going to do what we want to do. And, and if, uh, you know, you got somebody that can do it better, why not? So, wow, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's packed with, with insight there. Joyce, b before we got, uh, got started here, you'd uh, offered up a distinction between, uh, or uh, I'll call it a, uh, a platform of networking inbound and outbound marketing. You want to say a little, a few words about the, the, the trilogy here and how it all uh, interacts? Yes, absolutely. So when you think about networking, we want to do that to grow our business. When I work with clients, what I do, it's a combination of outbound prospecting and inbound marketing. Okay. Networking is a part of outbound prospecting efforts. Yeah. Although it can also be done with inbound marketing, right? That's the whole positioning your brand, getting strategic, reaching out via social media. Yep. So it is one of those key factors within all that because ultimately you got to make connections with other people if you're going to grow your business. Yeah. People yep. do business with people they know, like, and trust. Thank you, Bob Berg. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Great. So there's, there's a, uh, there's a few, it's not like a big massive machine here, but there's a few moving parts before we wrap up. Let me, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I want you to, uh, uh, to amplify, uh, I, I complimented you on your, on your, uh, website and you said, well, uh, you know, I've got a whole machine that helps me with that kind of stuff. Uh, this might be jarring for some of us to, the, you know, something that we don't want to really hear, but uh, tell us, give us your thoughts on how critical your web presence uh, really needs to be for all this to come together. Let me give you a couple of statistics. So you think about it, if you meet somebody in person, they say it takes an average of, you know, a couple of seconds to make a first impression. Yeah. In the online world, it takes one tenth of a second to make an impression based on a photograph. So if somebody happens to find you online, say it's Facebook or Twitter or wherever, whatever that image is, they say once that impression's made, it's harder to change. One tenth of a second. One tenth. Oh, one tenth. That's, when that's somebody scary. hits, <laughs> I know, right? When somebody comes to your website, Going back to LinkedIn, for example, say that's the first link that they hit in a Google search, and that is your mini website versus your other website, sure. people make a split second decision on your credibility the minute they hit their website. Then you've got three seconds to keep their attention to yeah. get them to scroll down the page. So in today's social selling environment, it is crucial that your online presence stands out. You've got to differentiate yourself from the competition. If you have broken links, you've got an old dated website, it's not mobile friendly because guess right. what? Over 60% of people are finding you on their cell phone or tablet. Right. That's why to me, before you ever go network, prospect, whatever that is, get your presence intact. And I had to learn this from the ground up. I call it my $23,000 mistake in my book. It's mm -hmm. in my intro because when I was doing it, I spent $13,000 on a website in 2008 with a two camera video shoot. It looked pretty. The copy was bad. People were popping off because I didn't understand the buyer experience. Mm. So there's things that need to be done. You don't have to spend that amount of money. And frankly, I developed a, a small digital agency side of my business because I was helping too many clients. Yeah. I don't build websites, but I was helping them and guiding them. So I've got an amazing team of resource partners 
to get this done in a cost-effective manner because most of my clients tend to be small business owners to entrepreneurs and they don't have big budgets. Right, right. And there's a way that you can look amazing and you can prospect and do everything you need to do without spending a fortune and make a lot of mistakes like I did when I started. <laughs> No, that's great. And thank you for the transparency. I mean, I, t I say all the time, you know, you can learn, from, uh -huh. uh, you can learn from uh, your experience. You can learn from somebody else's, right. somebody else's experience is a lot less painful, a lot less expensive and certainly the first place to go. Wow. This is uh, this is loaded uh, with great insight, uh, Joyce. I, and I know it's just the, 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 the tip of the iceberg in terms of how you can help. Uh, I want to, uh, just, uh, you know, kind of shine the light on the fact that uh, you're hearing folks, uh, someone that is uh, clearly focused on what the people that she's serving needs from the perspective of what she's learned. Her journey has taught her much, but I can tell that she's also listening to what else they need. This, this comment that you just kind of flew by, well, I was noticing almost everybody I worked with needed help with their uh, their website, and so I put a team of people together to help them with their website. I mean, that's brilliant entrepreneur thinking, Joyce, and uh, a great lesson for us, to, a great takeaway besides the great insights that you've given us here today. I know that uh, it, 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 we've only just scratched the scratch. There's a, uh, in looking at your website, which is absolutely gorgeous and very uh, friendly. Uh, by the way, I spent way more than three seconds uh, on your side. That's a good thing. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking. Um, so uh, tell us more. How can we, uh, what do we need to do to reach out? I know you've got some great things coming up. Uh, tell us more about how to get to know Joyce and get more uh, insight from you. Find me on social media. Find me on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I am on Twitter. However, I use it more of a listening tool. Mm. I'm on Instagram. So depending on that, if you find me on LinkedIn, please send me a customized note because if you don't, I'm going to put it back on you and say, why do you think we should connect? How can we add value yeah. to each other? So definitely do that. Of course, you can visit my website, JoyceLeman.com. It's everywhere. Oh, that's another tip too, just to kind of throw out of get your brand intact. So if your name's available, the way people are searching these days, not only think about your company brand, but go get your brand established and grab it. If you have kids, I mean, even newborns, go buy their name as a domain name if it's available. It's a very powerful piece of real estate in today's uh -huh. digital world. Nice. Good, mm -hmm. good, good, good uh, advice. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, we're going to uh, publish uh, a link to your website. Uh, you've got a, 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 an event coming up I, uh, that uh, we're going to be talking about. And um, uh, guys, this has been uh, really great to, to get to know you better, get to tap into your wisdom. And uh, I want to encourage everybody to, uh, to get to know Joyce. Uh, also, yes, and I'm going to put it up here. Go. <laughs> Please do. I love it. Something I want to point out, too. So my book was published in 2015. I've updated it four times. Wow. To keep pace with technology, and it's even notated on Amazon. There's a tactic on almost every single page. I've been told if you do everything I tell you to do, it'll take you about three months just to get through the book. Wow. But four times because algorithms change, the platforms keep changing, there's a ton of resources and hacks. And then you mentioned an event, it's actually not an event, I've created a virtual, it's a virtual curriculum and it's a year long process to work okay. with me. All right. Yeah, because I have private clients and not everybody has the budget to do private client work mm -hmm. nor can I spend you know that amount of time that I need to with all my private clients. So I've started the Influence Academy which combines business development, networking, personal branding, and it also gets personal time with me as well as I'm building, you know, building a community. That's what I love to do to connect everybody else. So you don't necessarily have to go anywhere. You can just access it all live. So that's what the Okay, I like that. I like that. I, uh, yeah. I, I just uh, uh, clicked on it today, and, and uh, uh, yeah, that's great clarification. So let's check that out. That link will be uh, uh, where we post this uh, everywhere. And uh, so once again, Joyce, thanks so much for your time here today, insights. 
and uh, and an example. Uh, you really truly are uh, walking your own talk here, and and I love that. So, folks, uh, we are going to call that a wrap today. But uh, I think this is one that if you haven't been taking notes, you want to go back and re-listen to. She gave us about. She gave us a, a to-do list, basically. A long to-do list. A long to-do Hang list. out with me. You'll get a long to-do list. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I am going to do exactly what I've advised here uh, myself because I can see clearly that there's some things that I can improve and change. So, so uh, success forward, entrepreneurs, all of us. Uh, thanks again for joining us, and stay tuned for our next luminary interview.